Today, a federal judge demanding that the Bush administration explain its role in destroying those CIA interrogation tapes at issue. Whether they violated a 2005 court order that required them to save all evidence and information regarding the torture, mistreatment, and abuse of detainees now at the United States Naval Base at Guantanamo Bay. Now, before the tapes were destroyed, the DOJ assured the judge that government officials were, quote, well aware of their obligation not to destroy evidence that may be relevant in pending litigation. Bush lawyers now scrambling to prepare for a hearing before Judge Kennedy scheduled for this Friday at 11 a.m. Meanwhile, a conservative Republican congressman, thought to be a Bush ally, refusing to give in to a Justice Department demand that Congress not investigate how and why the tapes were destroyed. So you're going to defy the, the uh, letter that you got from the Justice Department? I think so. I mean, I've, obviously I need to talk with the chairman of the committee about that, but that directionally is where I would like to go. Absolutely. you got to love the word defy. Congressman Peter Hoekstra says he is preparing to unleash a slew of subpoenas for witnesses, accounts, and documents from the courts to Congress. One thing seems pretty clear. Everyone outside of the executive branch is tired of getting snookered by this administration. They just don't trust them. Why should they? They don't trust that they've been told the truth in the past. They don't trust them to investigate themselves. Now they're paying the price in the form of investigations, outside investigations, over these destroyed tapes. Joining us now, Rachel Maddow, host of The Rachel Maddow Show on Air America, nationally syndicated columnist Tony Blankley, and Stephanie Miller, host of The Stephanie Miller Show. All right, Rachel, let me start with you. So that's my theory on this. My theory is that you got the courts coming at them, you got the Congress coming at them, and the bottom line is they're saying we don't trust you. Well, you don't have to even hate this particular Justice Department, or you don't have to cast even aspersions on Mukasey's character or anything to think that the White House and the Justice Department have no business and should have no business telling any other branch of government what they can investigate and what they can't investigate about this. We've got a divided system of government. The Congress, the judiciary, and the executive have equal, have equal power over something like this. So they can't say you guys can't investigate here. They don't get to draw those lines. See, Tony, I don't even think this is about Mukasey. I don't think this is about people saying, we don't trust Michael Mukasey to investigate. I think that people are actually looking forward to a possible change in this Justice Department. But with that said, they're worn out. They're tired of being lied to. They don't want to just let leave it to the Justice Department. Well, for, for the Republican huckster who used to be the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, I have the sense, and I don't, I, I don't have this firsthand, but I have the sense that he is very put out that uh, when he was supposed to be getting oversight information from the CIA, he was not get, getting it. And so uh, my experience in, in, on, in, on the Hill is that any time you deny a congressman, particularly a, a ranking member or a chairman, uh, his prerogatives, he'll come back at you whether you're on his party but, but or another one. But this didn't used to be I, the I case, Tony. That that's what's going on with him. But, but Tony, you know. That, that a couple of years ago even, you didn't have Republican congressmen leading the effort to say, hey, we want investigations because we don't trust this administration or this Justice Department. I mean, this is something new. Well, actually, with Huckster, I think you, you did. I forget what the issue was. It was some, but he had some issue. He was trying to get information from the, from the Bush administration back when he was chairman and couldn't get it. So he's been frustrated with this government for a long time. I can help you out on that one, Tony. I don't think Huckster has distinguished himself as any more than any other chairman of an important committee on the Republican side has distinguished himself in terms of being real hard-nosed, trying to pry stuff out of this administration. I mean, what the CIA well, did here, they did in 2005. Democrats didn't win the Congress till 2006. He's trying to make up for lost time for what he didn't oversee back then. He could be mad at the CIA, but when it counted, he wasn't there. Well, that's, uh, you know, I mean, we're playing with facts. It's my understanding that the CIA didn't inform them. They had the responsibility on, on matters that the committees right. have a right to have oversight on to inform them, and they didn't. So it's not a quite, right. I don't think the oversight committees can guess uh, what's being hidden at the All CIA. Right, but I, let me, let, me, let me play a sound by Stephanie Miller. I want you to listen to it because I think this is the issue. This is Arlen Specter, the Republican senator, probably the most influential senator uh, of either party when it comes to issues regarding the judiciary, the legal system, the Justice Department. Here's what he said. There is evidence of low morale, very low morale, uh, lack of credibility, candidly, your personal credibility. The department is dysfunctional. And Stephanie, see, I think that's the issue. I think the issue is 
that the country, the Congress, the courts, all have that feeling about this Justice Department. Yes, Alberto Gonzalez is no longer in charge of it, but there's still this stink. Yeah, uh, there's a shock, Dan. I guess even Republican congressmen don't like being yanked around. That's a legal term. Uh, you know, uh, this has been going on forever. I mean, even this guy that came out from the CIA and said, oh, you know, waterboarding works, he still said this came from the White House. CIA agents don't get up in the morning and decide what they want to do. You know, this has always come from the White House, and now they were specifically told not to destroy evidence, and they did. Can you well, say no, they weren't, they weren't told to destroy not Let's to read, destroy let's read that, Tony. I'll read specifically because I know you're going to say. Yeah. This, was, this was a specific court order. It said, all evidence and information regarding the torture, mistreatment, and abuse of detainees now at the United States Naval Base at Guantanamo Bay. And, Tony, I think you have a very legitimate point, which is, as a legal matter, the guys we're talking about, at least that we know of, weren't being held at Guantanamo Bay. To the best of our knowledge, yeah. that's what the news media is reporting, that they were therefore not covered by, by that court order. But let me go back to, to not trusting the Justice Department, because I remember when, when I was working for Newt up on the Hill, we were very untrusting of the then uh, Attorney General, Janet Reno. Uh, I believe the Democrats in their time were untrusting uh, of uh, Reagan's uh, Justice yeah. Department. There's a long history but, but of, the, of the opposition Tony. party seeing the Attorney General as a far too political figure. But Tony, not trusting is very different from having a Republican senator like Arlen Specter get up there, and, and I'll throw this one to you, yeah. and use the terms low morale, lack of credibility, your credibility. He's talking to the Attorney well, General. Yeah. Uh, That's the former, you, I mean, you're right. Obviously, under, under Gonzalez, it was a mess. Yeah, well, but how long? I mean, we're still, we're still suffering the stink of Gonzalez. But, but, but listen, that's why, that's why your expose on the Justice Department, the politicization of it, was important. That wasn't an expose about there being bad people having high-level jobs. That's an expose about perverting the purpose of the department. That's why the Constitution is our best protection here. It doesn't matter how much you hate the Attorney General or how bad a job they're doing running the department. What the Constitution gives us is separation of powers so that the Justice Department can't make the rules for who investigates and who doesn't. The other systems, the other parts of government have a role to play. And that's, that's, that protection comes just from the Founding Fathers. And these guys are trying to undo it. And that's the major problem here, mm. not just that they've hired idiots. Real quick, you made a, a, a point before about the courts. Yeah. You specifically think that there's an issue with the courts. We talked about the Congress a little bit, but you're saying yeah. you think the courts are saying, hey, we're relevant. This whole system here, the offshore prisons, the idea that the CIA should hold prisoners at all, the idea of enemy combatant as a legal terminology, this whole system, the secret memos that justified torture techniques, that was all designed yes. so that there would be an area of activity by the CIA, by the U.S. government, that was outside U.S. law. Yeah. The courts coming in and saying, we will investigate here if we want to, is them asserting their relevance. Yeah. Stop marginalizing us. Yeah. Look, I've said That's, this before. Dan, right, you know, real Dan, quick, Stephanie, Rachel, you're coming Rachel back. raises yeah. a great point. Yeah. We're, we're where do you start with the law breaking here? You know, this was oh, it's, it was in the secret prisons, so oh, right. those are illegal too. Oops, the tapes I, got erased. In the right. meantime, I want to know? give Rachel a little more time because we're going to thank her. Rachel, thanks for coming in. Appreciate thank you, Dan. it. Tony Blankley and uh, Stephanie are sticking around.